Hi, welcome to episode 7 of my Welcome to Star Trek Online. Today we are going to visit Deep Space Map, uh, Deep Space 9, which in the map you can find is in the Beta Ursae block. Here. If we consider we usually uh, will depart from Seoul, you need to go all like this until you reach Deep Space 9. Once you get inside, you need to get close approach Deep Space Nine, you will have also the option to approach Vajor, uh, get nearby the station by moving your throttle and select Dock at Deep Space Nine. Uh, Deep Space Nine is made like uh, the movie, well sorry the movie not, the television series of the same name uh, and it's as such uh, prepared in a circular way. It has all the amenities necessary, uh, but the training of bridge officers. And you can go to Ops through one of the doors in here to relate to operations. It will have a quick loading screen. And you, and you will get in here. Captain James Corland is the station boss. Sorry, no longer Captain Cisco is around. And you can recruit bridge officers in here. You can't train them, but you can recruit them in case you need. Essentially, it's nothing interesting in ops, but uh, some quests. Uh, you will get, especially if you play the feature series of the 2800 or 2800, as you prefer to mention it. In fact, the last, uh, almost the last part of Baldi Day Road implies a fight in here against Jem Hadar. <coughs> So what else can we find in Deep Space Nine? Well, first of all, you will spawn in here, which is nearby the tailor, in here, where you can change your looks, and uh, the basic amenities service, which include, among others, the retrain of your talents. Lieutenant Commander Tana it's a speak, uh, skill trainer that will allow you to respect, however, it will require a respect token you can only acquire in the C store services Captain Retrain token. It costs 400 points, so bear that in mind. Uh, you can access here the, the exchange to buy and sell items. And if you get in here, you can find access to your bank, be it the your bank or your fleet bank. And here you can access your mail. And this is essentially everything you need in, in here. There's also a chief medical officer in here that can uh, cure injuries either from yourself or from any of your bridge officer. Remember, injuries are uh, penalties you get for being killed, I mean rendered unconscious, in uh, elite difficulty missions. You have to select the difficulty so it won't happen by accident. Anyway, uh, I tend to move on the upside part of the, of the station. And here you can buy, if you want, some basic uh, armors and uh, shells of white quality for some energy credits. And, well, the same in here. If you move a little further, you will find uh, that there's a commodity broker and a broker of commodities. A commodity broker will so, uh, tell you what ice is needed in different uh, uh, different places. Then you can 
talk to the broker and boost some of them. If you check your replicator, you can't uh, if you're in here, but if we, if we look at the warp coils, cost for example 800 energy credits. We can go to the replicator and say, what's the price for warp coils in here? It is more expensive, 400 more uh, expensive credits. In case you're thinking about uh, buying some warp coils from from this broker and then disassembling in the replicator, you will lose money anyway. So don't bother. Also, the game is engineered so you can't go between sectors to sell the different. Uh, commodities to different uh, well brokers and gain any kind of profit you can't gain profit by doing that sorry that's the way it is here you can buy some basic ki uh, kits well not so basic if you can reach the mark 9 but anyway it's a good place to check for kits if you need and they are not on the exchange we are in there and here is the docking ring of the Deep Space Nine station uh, you can see it's in the opposite side of the rest of the services which is a little shame but uh, oh well you can talk to here to personalize your ship as we'd, uh, we were able to do in Earth Space Dock you can talk to you can talk to Chief Engineering Officer in here it has this uh, strangely shaped 9 on top of it to repair your ship from any kind of damage uh, she might have suffered during the doing of elite missions and you can go to the Dockmaster in here and change your active ship for another also, you can access all your ship's inventory from here and check their status. If you need, you can also requisition ship equipment or starship and shuttles in here. So essentially the only service you can find in Deep Space Nine uh, that it's available either on Earth Space Dock on or Kuonos if you're a Klingon is the training of bridge officers. And now we can find in here, you can see here, a weapon shop. They will, they can sell you weapons of white quality, if I'm not mistaken, yes, of different marks. which means they are of common quality or you can go to this sweet spot in here you can see there are some Klingon and Federation banners and Orion officer in here in this case and uh, some guy with heavy armor in the other side we are nearby the entrance of the dock and this is the Omega Force store you can get in here and buy Borg equipment, that means equipment against the Borg. You need first to talk, uh, to talk with Commander Roxy and redeem EDC, uh, Borg EDCs, Salvage or Tech. EDCs are encrypted data ships. Borg Salvage is, are this, this in here and Borg Tech, I don't have any on me right now, but it's uh, essentially engines, shells or deflectors while the encrypted data chips will always be green quality uh, rare world salvages will be always blue quality the other three might be green, blue or, or purple depending if they are uncommon, rare or very rare versions if we talk with this woman here we can check standard issue requisitions, special reserve requisitions and general merchandise 
first you most likely will go to, uh, will go to standard issue requisitions if we go to all you can see I can access up to mark 11 because I have two rare work salvages and 10 encrypted data ships so I could with my current uh, set of items in here get uh, two mark 11 requisition systems or I can go for a uh, for mark 10 requisitions but I don't want to do that because I'm not really interested right now I have more than enough gear for my ships in the, in in here special reserve you can see here require either encrypted uh, data chips for armor, weapon or shells for your personal use or shells, engines or deflector for your ship. You can either pay them with encrypted data chips or with the version I mentioned before. Recruit levels require common Borg salvage or 10 encrypted data chips. If we go back and say special reserve, now veteran, uh, the veteran version requires 40 of these encrypted data chips or the uh, rare Borg technology. Finally, we can go to the elite requisitions which can only be obtained if you have a prototype a prototype Borg technology example like prototype Borg deflector tech, prototype Borg engine tech, prototype Borg shell tech, etc. Uh, that means you won't be able to get them unless you are running the appropriate kind of mission. Ship uh, versions of, prototo of prototype Borg tech or frankly any level will only drop on space missions and personal gear will only drop on ground missions but the encrypted data chips will drop in either so you can get uh, up to mark 11 gear without the need to step on the ground or if you are ground oriented the need to fight on space Finally, on the general merchandise, you can exchange the gear you don't want to. For example, also you can get uh, three parts of the Borg set, a simulated Borg set. This will change your ship's uh, outline to in around uh, during my previous videos, where you can see that I have some greenish tincture and some Borg uh, addings in their hull and the likes it comes from here usually people will not get the shields they will get only the engines and the deflector array and the console you get from the and in advance first mission episode first mission it gives you an assimilated console that is pretty good for damage dealing uh, and uh, instead of these shells, they use the Mako shells because the Mako version of the shells has 5% absor absorption, 5% bleed through. That means uh, only 95% of the damage will get to the shells, and of that 95%, only 90% will stay with the shells, and 5% will go to your hull directly. Hey, I managed to confiscate some contraband from my ship. Haha. <laughs> oh well. Finally, you can also, if you have more than enough encrypted data ships, uh, try to recruit some Borg duty officers. They are of blue for 20 chips or purple for 40 chips quality. They are all resilient, all logical all have eidetic memory and all are efficient. The difference essentially is the chances they give. And I suppose the purple version are uh, have a better chance than the blue version of doing whatever they do. So essentially they are 
oriented to be on active duty my, mainly also you can get uh, lock boxes if oh they are I can't can't hit <laughs> okay it was a small crash of the game uh, I didn't even have to restart anyway lock boxes which are mystery lock boxes you already saw me open some of them after finishing an SDF they usually give you the green <coughs> sorry they usually give you the green version of the lock boxes we already saw before <coughs> but sometimes they can give you something else anyway you can also convert your data chips or the engine of the or the Borg technology don't, you don't want into dilithium. In my case, I usually don't want rare Borg salvages because I can't use them to obtain my ground gear, and I already have all the ship gear I want. So I can come here and say, "Give me a thousand and fifty-six dilithium for each of my rare Borg salvages." Right now I'm, I'm in a hurry, so well. Once you've got your mm, requisition marks, remember we get them um, by talking to her, redeeming this stuff. Standard issue. You can go here to either the Mako Commando for space based stuff or the Mako Veteran for ground based stuff. <coughs> the ground equipment can't be uh, normal. Well, first you need to select a mark. Let's go with mark 11, for example. You can go with standard issue, which is weapons. You select between them, etc., etc., etc. They are just uh, Borg versions of items. They don't really have much uh, much difference between in themselves and other weapons. They are not part of any kind of set. Personal protection, the same, it's purple level gear that gives uh, different bonuses and the like. Or you can go to the special reserve where you can get the sets. There are two sets, Omega Force and Mako. I prefer the Mako mainly because it has uh, a phaser battle rifle instead of an anti-proton and auto carving. just a personal preference I mean they both are 92 deep, uh, damage per second I believe well the carbine is a little more but it uh, shots three uh, three times and the other shots one time so again it's a matter of preference uh, and when you have three items of the same mark and the same set in this case Omega Force or Mako you will get the three um, option advantage which is the tactical readiness network integral frequency remodulation essentially it will be like hitting the frequency remodulator yes that instead of taking four seconds in which you can't do anything it will be instantaneous with 10 seconds cooldown but again there are trade-offs about the space equipment you can requisite the special reserve for shields, engines and uh, deflector arrays that are part of a set either Omega or Omega Force or you can go for a standard issue which is essentially purple level impulse engines, deflectors or shells that are not part of any kind of set and uh, usually it's better to go for the resilient shells because they have a 5% absorption but you can see this one despite being mark 11 has only 6000 uh, well nearly 6.5 uh, thousand maximum shell capacity while the set version is I believe, let me check, N uh, nearly a thousand more, 7.5 thousand more. And you can go to ship weapons, which are the ones I already bought all I needed. 
and get uh, by type, be it antiproton, phaser, disruptor, plasma, polaron, tetrion, or uh, version beam arrays with their 250 degrees targeting arc, beam banks which are only 90 degrees, dual heavy cannons 45 degrees, dual cannons 40, 45 degrees, antiproton cannons 190 degrees, and turrets with 360 degrees. Usually the higher the um, The higher the arc, the smaller the damage per second they'll get. So turrets will do the, the less damage per second, 129, against, for example, beam arrays, 172. However, turrets have 360 degrees targeting arc. That means they will be firing all the time against your target, regardless of where it is. Where it is. Also, we have here projectile weapons, which are essentially mines or torpedoes. In case you're seeing the, the series, you know that the best weapon is Tricobalt. However, the Tricobalt uh, torpedo has a big problem in Star Trek Online. First of all, it will launch a destructible torpedo. That means, in player versus player, your enemy can uh, pick it up and destroy it. You already saw me before in the SDFs destroying some plasma torpedoes launcher launched by the Borg cubes. Uh, all mines can be destroyed and the Tricobalt version, which you can find here, has the little problem of only spawning one Tricobalt mine that will however deal nearly 17,000 kinetic damage and disable the target for 3.5 seconds but uh, the problem the Tricobalt devices have both the torpedo and the mines is that you can only fire them once every minute and that is an awfully long time especially for items that can be destroyed while en route sadly we don't have any showing here uh, any kind of clue as how much time they get to reload so it's a lot of uh, test and error but you can google it in the in internet and get an answer somewhere somewhere but I'm usually going with photon torpedo launcher which has uh, six seconds cooldown and I believe I run with chroniton yeah, Croniton mine launchers. They, these are blue. They are not uh, Borg level. I should uh, buy some. In fact, they have 15 seconds cooldown. Yeah, let's do that. I knew there was a reason I didn't want it to run. And I'm not going to wa to waste my chips because I want to have 40 to get the next parts of my Mako set. You can see here in this uh, bridge officer I only have the shells, Mark 11 however. Mark 11, standard issue, weapons, thank you, projectile. So give me the Chroniton mine launcher. <coughs> So it's just a matter of uh, personal preference. Also remember that uh, mines and torpedoes usually will consider to do kinetic damage. Usually, as I said. For example, if we check, we can see that the plasma torpedo launcher that deals kinetic damage but also the, uh, deals 630 plasma damage over 10 seconds. But again, all torpedoes mm, will the de uh, will deal kinetic damage, and all mines will do the same. Yeah. So again, it's just a matter of personal preference. Uh, what else can I show you in here? Well, we can go to quarks. Can't we? 
Oh, of course, and here's the Temple of the Prophets, in case you want to visit. You can see it's awfully close to Porks. This golden gate here leads to there. So let's have a quick visit to the Temple of the Prophets, which uh, don't hold anything really interesting for a player, unless you are on a quest and require some visit. In fact, the feature series uh, requires you to go there and well, find someone uh, to start the quest. It also re will require you to go to Quarks. Anyway, let's enter Quarks bar. Again, it has to do a small loading time. And here we are. We have a bartender, Hadron. We have a... Sec uh, yeah. We have a, a seller here that will offer us trophies are hol and holomiters that cost gold pressed latinum. Holomiters are like disguises for your ship. They won't have any kind of effect in game, but your ship will look uh, different. And uh, there's a there's a store here. Gold press Latinum conversion unit. That in case you have all hol all holiday adornments and the like, you can change them for gold press Latinum. There's also a collector in here that uh, will only collect uh, prototype consoles. Yes, this one buys prototype consoles. Don't know what uh, he does. And finally, we have here a holographic version of Lita. You might remember from Deep Space Nine. She was uh, Vajoran... Devo... Uh, mistress in Quarks. And here's the Devo table. Here you can play Devo if, Davo if I manage somehow to talk to Lita or to the roulette uh, and we can start and I can show you. Essentially you need to wait for it to end. I mean, I mean the game plays in real time and you can't uh, join a game once it has started. Seems like the game to end. At least for now. Mm. Oh well. You can also play double at uh, other Ferengi owned stations. And in fact, if you have troubles in trying to set up a, a game because there's there's too many people and you can't select your bets the way you want, an option you have is go again to the episode feature series Second Wave, the first of the 2800 series that will uh, give you a whole Deep Space Nine instance for you or other fellow players that are in the same group you are. So for some reason I can't join the Davo table. Mm, might be full or whatever. Anyway, in the Star Trek Online Wikia there's an article on, on Davo that will tell you where to place your bets to earn the maximum profit, uh, well, the maximum possible profit or potential profit in case you can't, uh, manage to get it. It, as I said, uh, has some chance variables involved. We are now in the second floor of um, Quarks. There's a waitress in here that will sell us some liquors and little more. In fact, nothing more. In case you're wondering, you, we can jump and go to the 
first level of quarks from there without much problem. We will suffer some damage of course, but that's the price of doing business. In here we have another waitress, or in this case a bartender. Oh, a shady bar patron, it must be related to some quest. And that's it in here. So, of course I can jump down there, get some damage, 106, oh dear. But I still can't uh, join the double table. A shame, I'd like to show it to you. But anyway, this was Deep Space Nine, one of the stations in the game. And if you n want to know it, uh, there is a way to get a transwarp transition instantly to Deep Space Nine. Yes, it is. You need to go to a diplomatic rank of, uh, let me see, rank 4. A hundred thousand diplomatic experience po points you can only earn from duty officer missions and some special diplomatic missions. Usually diplomatic missions are not worth it. You will find an empty vase, you will walk around and you will only earn 10 diplomatic experience points. <coughs> also you can see I have a maximum of 200 rooster of duty officers, that's because I bought the expansion pack. And I believe that covers everything really needed in here. So thanks for watching. I believe the next video I'm going to make will be yes, Starfleet Academy event that will start in one hour more or less. And then I will do the Federation Mirror Universe event so you all can see everything really needed. Oh, this is another event uh, that is interesting to have in mind, the time to craft. It uh, lasts for an hour and it gives you a 20% discount on unreplicable materials and uncommon unreplicable materials. Those, by the way, are used for the crafting of the highest level items. For example, a Mark 11 anti-proton dual heavy cannon requires. Let's see if I can see. No, I can't really see the uh, what it asks for. But I believe it's uh, yes, 30 technical schematic, which I do not have. But it asks for 15 uncommon and replicable materials and 23 common and replicable materials. Or you can go to consoles. For example, tactical consoles, you can see I need technical schematics, which I don't have. And here we find the best anti-proton console, plus 26% damage. Again, I need technical schematics, which I don't have enough of. If you want, you can buy that uh, samples from the exchange. You can get your duty officers to do assignments that will give those uh, that to you. Usually, they will be science uh, science missions, or you can uh, go around the galaxy trying to find some anomalies with a small mini game. I will showcase in a for in a future video. Or you can wait for the multiphasic event to get bonus uh, anomalies for each uh, scanning you do. Right now I got 5 uncommon alloy from my duty officer's missions. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.